Uh, before I get into this evening's presentation, I do have another question uh, that came to us. And I told you this morning I would try to answer this one this evening. And so the question is related to baptism. And it asks the question, can someone get baptized more than one time? Is that okay with God? And, for example, baptized in two different churches, uh, Baptist, Presbyterian, or something along those lines. So I want to encourage you, open your Bibles with me. Grab your Bibles, and I want to take you to the New Testament. And we actually have an example in Acts chapter 19. So if you're using the Blue Pew Bible, that's going to be on page 1450. Page 1450. Acts chapter 19, and again, as is my tradition, when you get there, what do I want to hear from you? Amen. Give me a hearty amen, let me know you're there, and if you need more time, what are you supposed to say? Have mercy. Have mercy. That's right. Aren't you glad we serve a God of mercy? Yeah. All right, are we ready? Yeah. Verse 1, and the title, the breakdown, the little subtitle says, Paul's at Ephesus. So it gives us some geographical indicators. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. And finding some, what's the next word? Disciples. Disciples. Pause for a second. I have attempted over and over and over to instill in your mind that a disciple is someone who embraces the teachings of a teacher. Yes or no? Yes. Can, can we agree on that? Right? And remember... Because most people are okay with that part of the discipleship um, explanation or definition. But the other part of being a disciple is that we're now willing to tell other people what the teacher has taught us. Okay, so these are disciples. That indicates that they have received teaching on some level. Yes or no? Okay, let's continue to read. Finding some disciples, he, this is now Paul, he references back to Paul, he said to them, did you receive what? The Holy Spirit when you believed. So they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. So has their teaching been complete? Obviously not. Right? There's something that has been lacking, and we don't know what all is lacking, but we know in this specific example that at least their understanding and a knowledge of the Holy Spirit is non-existent. Uh, what are you talking about? We've not so much even heard there is a Holy Spirit. Let's continue to see what happens. And he said to them, into what then were you baptized? Notice, being a disciple meant that they were also baptized and willing to follow Jesus in a public capacity. Are you with me on that? Right? I've had people approach me before and they say, Pastor, I want to be baptized, but I want to do it in private. I love you. That's not how it works. Right? To live for Christ is a public proclamation. Right? It's to say to the world, I'm choosing to belong to Jesus. Right? And so they've been baptized. So, so far, I see some very positive things that they've done, don't you? They received teaching. They embraced that teaching. They chose to become disciples, which means they were also telling others. And they were baptized, following the example of Jesus, and became a part of the church family. But their teaching was not complete. Let's look in a little further. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized, verse 4, with a baptism of what? saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with new tongues and prophesied. Notice what's happened. They had a foundation of teaching. They had been instructed to a certain level. So I want to go back and use an illustration that I used last week. If you're building a wall, a masonry wall, you remember this illustration? Laying bricks, right? I have to have a foundation to start laying my bricks. Information, knowledge, teaching is the same way. There's a foundation. It has to be built upon something. As Christians, guess what our foundation is? 
has to be the Bible. But then as I study the Bible, as I learn, as I, as I become a disciple, I'm going to learn things and I need to build, right? And so that knowledge base starts building. When Paul rebaptized them, anywhere in what we just read, did he look at them and say, Jeff, that first baptism was garbage. And you laugh because, yeah, it's a little funny, but I've actually had people tell me when they learn new things from the Bible and I ask them to consider being baptized into those new teachings, they tell me, were you saying my first baptism wasn't good enough? No. Praise God for your first baptism. But there's obviously a very clear biblical example that when I learn significant new Bible teaching... And not knowing that there's a Holy Spirit and then learning that there is a Holy Spirit, is that pretty significant? Absolutely. Right? And we're not talking about little nuances of truth. We're talking about significant biblical truth. There is a biblical mandate that. And we're not washing away, as it were, the previous baptism. We're adding more bricks to the course. We're just building that wall. Right? and making that discipleship commitment a little bit deeper. Now, there are other times somebody might say, well, I accepted all the truth that was given to me, but then I spiritually divorced myself from Christ. If we walk in such a way that we walk away and turn our back on Christ, there's probably a good good chance that we need to publicly reaffirm that commitment to Christ. I've been married this June be 30 years. If I divorced my wife or she divorced me, but then we wanted to get back together, in the eyes of God and legally, I couldn't just pick back up and say, okay, we're married again. I'd have to make a recommitment. Are you with me? And so if we spiritually divorce ourselves from Christ, so to speak, there could also be a case very easily made from Scripture that we might need to choose rebaptism. But I want to encourage you, just because you stumble and fall in a particular area doesn't mean that you need to be rebaptized every time you make a mistake. Right? We see that the communion service was a time when Christ gathered his disciples around that communion table, that Last Supper, and he asked them to make a commitment to embrace his covenant relationship with them. So in the up and downs of our spiritual walk, if we haven't turned our back on Christ, we don't need to get rebaptized every time we make a little mistake. Let's just participate in that communion service and make that commitment to Christ afresh. And so, does that make sense tonight, yes or no? Yeah. So if you want some follow-up information on that, I'm happy to chat with anybody. Um, but hopefully that brings a little bit of clarity uh, to to the question there. And if you have other questions, uh, please keep them coming. More than happy to do my best to, to answer them. And please know, my goal is to always take you to Scripture. Right? I want to give you a biblical answer for good biblical questions. So.